Um, item number eight, introduction and first reading of ordinance number 173-2015, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Clear Lake amending chapter text of the Clear Lake Municipal Code, adding section 10 through 8, abatement of public nuisances, and 10 through 9, administrative penalties, and repealing and replacing section 10 through 7, medical marijuana cultivation, to ban the cultivation of medical marijuana. I will refer this to our city manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This item is on the agenda as a result of direction at the January 22nd council meeting to return with an ordinance for your consideration that would, if adopted, prohibit the growth of marijuana within the city limits. That direction was based on information provided at that meeting, previous discussions, public comment, and comments received by uh, most all of you, I think, individually. I do want to indicate to the council that since the last meeting, it was brought to my attention that one of the pages of the maps that was um, put up on the wall showing uh, fairly large growth in city limits did have an inadvertent letter, uh, an inadvertent error in that two parcels were highlighted on one of the pages as grow sites when in fact they were not. That error has been corrected. Tonight our city attorney will review the ordinance drafted for your consideration and is prepared to answer questions. But prior to uh, having the review of that ordinance, I'd like to have our finance director, Chris Becknell, provide information that will address a frequent question that I think all of you have been receiving and certainly the staff has which is, without code enforcement, how can the city enforce the provisions of not just this proposed or current ordinance, but other municipal code violations specific to health and safety in our community? With failure of the last sales tax measure uh, that would have provided funds for a full code enforcement program, staff began to work on a way to still create a program that would begin to address uh, some, at least some, of the, um, the violations that currently exist in, within the city. As you're all aware, code enforcement is one of the Council's four priority goals and therefore important to find a way to make progress in meeting the intent of that goal. A more detailed pre presentation will be made at the March, one of the March Council meetings on the program as a whole, but this evening I would like to have Chris report on now on the funding source that has been identified to enable the city to address the financial obstacle the city has had for many years in funding code enforcement. And then following that, our city attorney will review the ordinance and we'll take your questions prior to public comment. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. Uh, criticism of the no grow ordinance is that if you didn't enforce it under the old ordinance, what enforcement will there be under the new ordinance? A reasonable question. The city's code enforcement issue is not just related to the no grow ordinance under discussion here, but also related to the overall lack of significant and sustained enforcement effort for all municipal codes designed to protect the health and safety of the citizens and visitors. A major obstacle to code enforcement of any kind has been the severe contraction in budgetary resources in the past several years. Staff has developed a plan to significantly increase code enforcement. The city was awarded a grant from CDBG, Community Development Block Grant, to improve Phillips Avenue and 18th Street. CDBG has determined that before the city can access that grant, we must have a plan to spend and actually spend to spend and actually spend our existing and anticipated CDBG program income. That plan is called the supplemental. We have estimated that over the next two and a half years, the city will have approximately $500,000 of program income. One of the allowable CDGB programs is for code enforcement. Staff has prepared, submitted, and has received approval from CDBG to implement this effort. The basic plan is to staff code enforcement with three officers, an allocation for attorney's fees to prepare abatement warrants and orders, and an allocation for support staff to process citations, abatement orders, administrative penalties, and leads. Staff anticipates that this program will be ramped up in the very near future. Additional details about this effort will be discussed at a city council meeting in March. 
I want to call to the Council's attention that this was a group effort with input and suggestions from all departments. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of Council. Uh, at the January 22nd meeting, Council directed that uh, return back an ordinance regarding the cultivating medical marijuana. The direction was to draft an ordinance that would ban or prohibit cultivation of marijuana in the city and enforcement mechanisms to accomplish that. Before you, in the uh, agenda, is such an ordinance, whereas the, the city's previous ordinance permitted marijuana cultivation on a sliding scale based on the size of the property. This ordinance will repeal and place that is include two additional measures of the enforcement of the ordinance. One for nuisance abatement and one for administrative citations. Section 10.8 of the ordinance at the beginning does include provisions that ban the cultivation of marijuana in all zones within the city. In section 10.8, it includes mechanisms for the civil abatement of public nuisance. It includes the due process elements to conduct such abatement. It starts that the city would investigate the row. Secondly, the owner and occupant would get an order to abate such a They could then request a hearing before the city council regarding the abate order. The city then has the ability to recover costs through a due process hearing. The expenses were documented and itemized. The expenses were hosted on property hearing before the city council would be conducted. The city would then have the ability to collect such costs via assessment on the property and a lien on the property. In addition to the police event, the this would allow for administrative penalties to be levied uh, based on the grows on, on the crops. It would include $1,000 per plant and $100 per plant if the plant remains passive. also would include the civil action, lien on the property, or an assessment on the property. I do note that there are two minor modifications to the ordinance, one on page four at section 10-8.010. It references Clear Lake in two words. That would be changed to one word. Uh, and then also on page eight, a minor modification at 10-8.140. It says for the city that actually be recorder of the county as opposed to the city. And that's my report. Thank you.
and making it hard for us to get our medicine. A lot of us are low income, we can't afford to buy it, so we grow it. But yet, when you drive down the street and you look at a corner house and you can see 40 or 50 plants peeking up over the fence line, why is there nobody there to check on it? And I'm all for compliance checks because I'm totally behind this. I mean, we should follow the laws and the rules. Second of all, the permit situation. Are we going to issue just permits, so many permits? Or are they going to allow as many permits applications to be filled as possible? Or are you going to set a lot limit on it? Only 1,500 people can get permits. Um, we need to look over what we're doing. The amendment by Bruno there is um, it's, it's more reasonable than what you're putting down in trying to control people from getting the medicine that they need or want and buy because they can't afford it. Not even the government does that to us. They give us Medi-Cal to get our medicine, our prescription medicines to pay for them and stuff like that. But here, there's no government subsidy for this. But yet people do need it. It is a no medicine for cancer patients, AIDS patients, and older people with chronic arthritis, but yet you're going to deny us that right to meditate and to be a well person because of a few bad apples. So I think that maybe we should get back together with the police department and find out why when you drive down a street and you know there's a grow there, why aren't you knocking on that door asking for, okay, can I see compliance? If they're not in compliance, cite them, bust them, whatever you're going to do. If they're in compliance, leave them alone. Amen. 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 Hello, my name is uh, Declan Blunt Hong, and uh, uh, I'm going to take a different take on this. Uh, I think Lake County should embrace marijuana cultivation because the people of California have approved this, and it's a money maker, and it brings uh, money into the community, and this is an important factor, and. Uh, more effort to be like on the meth problem here. And the people that are afraid and, and you know and, and steal crops and you know and they're like meth heads and do like good things. Uh, most pop people are like very peace loving, very gentle people. It's a it's a peace loving uh, uh, kind of thing. You know, I mean and you know um, but I think like that you guys are taking the wrong attitude towards this. I mean, you should embrace this like it's like it's legal in California, and you this could be like something that like that actually like bring it brings money into Lake County, which is something that's definitely needed. Uh, and but what you should like to focus on is is, is like these, these freaking raiders and the meth heads and like the, you know and that stuff and and, and not like not, not peace loving like people that are doing personal like and good work. You know, I mean, uh, if, if you meet a pot smoker, like they're not a bad person. You know, they're not. But I mean, it's by nature, it puts you in like in harmony. You know, it's just, it's so much different. And but like all, all these other things and alcohol is cool. And weed is not. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's something wrong with the equation. Uh, you know, uh, but it is. You should be embracing this, and and you should like 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 say like yeah, we are the county that like freaking like the, you know that allows marijuana, <laughs> not the one that like freaking wants to ban it. Like and, and you know and, and if you sell it, like what the hell? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Uh, thank you very much. If I could interject, if you look odd and poop and holler and, and make a ruckus in the middle of someone's two minutes, you're taking away their time to make their point. You're doing the person who's speaking a disservice by being disrupting. First off, your ordinance is doing everybody a service. Thousand dollars a plant is nothing more than extortion. You're sitting back there wagging your feelers and finger at us, telling us, well, we gotta follow by the rules, but then you change the rules. You change them right after you get elected and get put into office. Then you're gonna go change the rule and try to extort money from me, and if I don't pay, you're gonna steal my property. Last time you stole property it was chalk and it was red tagging houses and taking them. If you guys want, you can find me out. I don't need to pay property tax to you anymore on my four places. Find me out and I'll leave right now. Hello. Have our hands up if you support. And 
My name is Hezekiah Allen. I'm a resident of Sacramento. Mayor, council members, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. To everyone here who gathered to express your perspective on this topic, thank you for coming and participating. I am the executive director of the Emerald Growers Association. We're a trade association, statewide membership of 850 members, cannabis patients, farmers, and businesses that support us. We focus our work primarily in Sacramento because that's where the real work needs to be done. But every now and then, a local policy gets our attention long enough to come out and voice our opinion. Usually they involve the word ban, because bans are nonsense. Bans are not compassionate, bans close the door on opportunity, and bans are not enforceable. Councilmember Sabatier, I applaud your leadership in wanting to have an actual policy conversation about how we can evade nuisance and deal with the problems without closing the door on opportunity, without turning our backs on patients, how we can embrace compassion, community values, and the spirit of partnership to work together to enact real, sensible policy with regard to cannabis cultivation in the state of California. So I encourage you, don't go the way of the ban. It doesn't solve anything. You can't enforce it. It won't help. We'll be here year in and year out talking about this again and again. Let's craft good policy. Let's look forward together. We're willing to help. We have policy solutions. We'd love to engage in dialogue. But a ban closes the door on opportunity, and it closes the door on public dialogue. Thank you for the time today. Thank you. My name is Suzanne Charles, and I live here in the city of Korea, and I wish I had had an opportunity to look at Bruno's information before I prepared what I want to say to him. But part of what I want to say is the same thing that I said the last time. We need an ordinance that's easily enforceable, and I think no grow is. It needs to be as strict as anywhere else in the county and no grow would be would meet that criteria. I think it also needs to be compassionate and I think actually the ordinance is. There is a provision for appealing an abatement notice for just cause which allows for just cause to be taken into consideration in the current ordinance. It also does not eliminate the dispensaries which uh, other communities are doing. The number of people here to speak for allowing grows in the city shows actually the magnitude of the problem. With so many, quote, sanctioned grows, it lends itself to other non-sanctioned grows and makes enforcement much, much more difficult. Lakeport allows indoor grows. Our indoor grows right now result in the destruction of whole houses. So this option does not seem right for the city of Clear Lake. This ordinance is designed to break the unfortunate. Two this ordinance is designed to break the unfortunate pattern established last year. Once that is accomplished, the ordinance can be revised or reviewed again for what makes sense. What makes sense to me right now is no grow. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Donna and I work in the city of the Lake's vicinity. Tonight I'm expressing my personal views in supporting the Metro Ordinance. Lake County, particularly the city of Clear Lake, is known for having the worst health statistics in the state, highest poverty in the state, and even though the numbers are misleading, the media has reported high crime rate. This is unacceptable. Tonight we have the opportunity to change. Tonight we have to make the first step to make a better future for our children and our community. Tonight, we begin the journey to bring Clear Lake back to a desirable place to work, live, and play. We have high unemployment rate, but we also have good paying jobs that are not filled because we cannot attract qualified workers. A recent example, we offered a teaching position to a qualified candidate. She and her family visited over winter break. She loved the, the facilities, teachers, and administrators that she met, but she could not raise her kids in this community. I believe that Clear Lake can become a desirable place to live, work, and play, and together we can make this happen. We have the highest death rate from all causes in the state. That's a horrible statistic, especially knowing that many of those factors start in childhood. The Center for Disease Control has defined adverse childhood experiences, or the ACEs factors. Prolonged exposure, as well as a number of factors, is highly correlated with long-term health and social outcomes. Poverty is one of those factors. 
The percent of students qualifying for free and reduced lunch in the city of Clear Lake is nearly 90%. Inadequate living conditions, lack of appropriate clothing, and poor nutrition are evident on a daily basis. Some of our kids only get food at school. This is not acceptable. Pass the, pass the no grow ordinance. Um, really? Passing the no grow ordinance will not in and of itself. Been a minute and a half since you said 30 seconds. How does that side of the debate get more time? We are finding it and you are disrupting. We will have one and two. Passing the no-grow ordinance will not in and of itself change the entire dynamics of the city, but it is the cornerstone in building a new future for Clear Lake. We need clear leadership and consistent actions to demonstrate that we are committed to this journey. Our assets are abundant. The shoreline of the lake, beautiful vistas, areas of the park, cleanest air, and amazing community spirit. That is the Clear Lake that I want to be part of. Make a commitment to invest and others will follow. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first question I'd like you all to ask yourself at that table, looking around here tonight, these are your constituents. Do you think that you, your idea represents what the majority wants tonight? Or at all? Okay. The new ordinance is only one year old. You know, we can't come to an accurate conclusion on how effective it's been with the statistics the chief of police brings, just with, if they're incomplete. Strictly incomplete. You know, you got to be transparent about that. I can't came to that conclusion. Okay? This, this is, you know, by enacting this ordinance, it penalizes those who were in compliance. It's sort of like saying if a couple of people get arrested for a DWI, we should take everybody's driver's license away. I mean, it also forces anybody who needs their medicine to go buy it at the Passion Club, okay? That's an unaffordable thing for a lot of people. It's much more affordable to be able to grow it yourself. And you complain about the smell of the marijuana, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna misdirect our, our city's limited resources towards harassing medical marijuana patients when we have the medical and we have the smell of the lake to address. I mean, if you wanna complain about the smell of anything, the lake smells six months out of the year. The marijuana harvest smells a month to two months out of the year. It's inexcusable that you guys are misdirecting our, our city funds, our taxpayer dollars, to harass medical marijuana patients and not address the bigger issues in the city. Have you seen the roads in the city? <laughs> the county's already being sued right now for violating people's Fourth Amendment constitutional rights based on a similar ordinance that they passed. And I can tell you don't want me to talk as long as the last lady. Okay. So I'll make this quick. Really? Hi, my name is Sandy. A few years ago, I had colon reconstruction surgery where I was on a feeding tube for almost four weeks. I was in bed with my eyes closed, rolled up in a little tiny ball until somebody came up to me and said, here, try this, which I did. And you know what? In 30 minutes, I was standing up and I was checking my email, which I hadn't done in a year and a half. Now, I started a petition for this town because I saw there was a lot of people that were in my position who were real patients. I got 337 signatures within three and a half days. I saw that the zero tolerance people only had 45. They got 45 signatures. Yes, they did. Within a week. We were up three days. We were getting a signature every 10 minutes. I gave you a stack. The stack is sitting right there. You can clearly see it's huge. That's only one third of the signatures we got. I printed 100 of them. We got 337 plus. I want to talk about the clubs. If the clubs cannot grow their own, the price of the clubs will go up and the access will be limited. Number two, six plants is what California allows us. We should be allowing our own residents here. Next, I believe that the, uh, the quality of life for actual patients, real patients will go down. I remember actually waking up in the morning and thinking, oh, I want to look at this little plant because my neighbor had some plants. 
And I would wake up and actually get up to go look. I just couldn't believe it. It was like so cool. I always wanted to do it myself, so I bought a house here. And I thought, I'm going to do this. But because of all of these laws, I have been afraid to do it. So I've been sitting here buying it from the CCC at over 150 bucks, but I don't have that money. But I need it because I don't want to be curled up in a little ball with my eyes closed, not being able to talk or look at people. I couldn't walk for two years. I had to get on a treadmill to learn to walk again. It helped me walk. It helped me eat. Thank you for hearing my story, people. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, thank you for your time on this matter. First, I would like to um, address the matter of crime and the pros and cons. I would like to address violent crime in particular. Colorado, since the one year that Colorado has passed legalization of marijuana, violent crime in particular has dropped 3.4%. Washington State, half the amount of time that they've had it legal. Crime has dropped, violent crime has dropped 7%. Colorado is bringing in $300 million in the first year in tax revenue, so much so that after paying for schools and infrastructure and anything else that the state needs, they're now going to be giving that surplus back to the members of, to the citizens of the state with their taxes. Washington has already brought in $184 million in, again, half a year. Same situation. If we follow um, the ordinance that you would like to enact, the cost of medicine from dispensaries will rise. Large-scale growth will still grow despite the ordinance. They won't care. Yes? Okay. Despite the ordinance, therefore driving cash-strapped patients to buy off the streets, equaling more crime. If we properly enforce Bruno's proposed ordinance, more time may be spent by law enforcement and the community targeting the large-scale growth that damage the environment, drive up violent crime, Making clearly a safer, cleaner, more unified community that can prosper for patient and non-patient alike. Patients following Bruno's ordinance will lower crime and cost on local government and allow said patients to cultivate cannabis medications within the law at low cost to the patient who are already cash strapped. None of us wants to break the law. What we just we just want an ordinance that works for all of us. <laughs> Cal Normal is in support of us as well. We have received a letter, don't have the time to speak about it. One more little bit, I promise. With this ordinance, the problem will still exist and continue to get worse, creating an even more overwhelming situation for local law enforcement to have to deal with. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Frank Foster. I've been a member of this community for since 1975. I've lived in the avenues for 27 years. And I have lived in the avenues for over 27 years. And I'm seriously thinking about moving. It's off the hook. The, for, the marijuana is, is, it is not six plants. It's 100 plants. Every lot is full. My son does not feel safe walking down the street. He does not feel safe. He, the, the dogs are attacking him because there's all these dogs running all over the place because people are having dogs to guard their marijuana. I am not anti-marijuana. It would, be, would have been really nice to see this community get together and help enforce what was going on. But it was off the hook, okay? I live in the avenues and I, I don't want to live there anymore. And, I'm, and it makes me sad. It makes me want to cry because it is crazy. You know, it is crazy what's going on out there. And if you guys don't see it, then then there's a, then, then you guys are blinding yourselves. This is the crime, seriously crime. There's shootings and stabbings and robbings in the avenues almost a daily occurrence. You know, it's where's the reports? I see the police. I hear I have a scanner. I see it. I live it. I drive by it. You know, and. And it's really sad that this compassionate thing that's, that's, that helps people, that, that people have destroyed it and ruined it for everyone. That, you know, I'm sorry, but it, you have ruined it for everyone. Those people with the 100 plants and, and having five, six, seven lots all full of marijuana, nobody's even living on them. 
you've ruined it for everybody. You know, and, I'm, and it's really makes me upset that, that I live in this community that could have been, that could have been a great experience, but my son does not even want to live here anymore. Hi, my name is Ken Young. I've been a, a uh, certified addiction specialist for 27 years. And I've worked for the HIV AIDS population in Lake County and with hospice services of Lake County. And the one thing that they all have in common is um, there are points that intersect with uh, when people get really sick. Um, I, I have a, a real strong objection to something that nobody's mentioned is the $50 permit fee. Most of the clients that I worked with at uh, CJF didn't have $50. They don't have $50. You know, they can't even survive, you know, buy groceries. And, and they get sick. I've seen people um, there and at hospice that were actively dying. And they were able to get mar medical marijuana. Thank you. And, uh, and their lives changed. You know, all of a sudden they could eat. They weren't wasting anymore. I mean, this is real. You know, this isn't just a slogan. This is real. And um, it's right here. And it's right here. Thank you. shaky ground because of the poor making ground act violations. But more than that, I want to tell you my concerns. My girlfriend Sandy, who can't be here tonight because she has cancer, is a realtor and a grandmother and a cancer survivor. Sandy is the type of person who would never see smoking pot, yet she would be the first person to defend it because both she and I know how much it helps her with nausea and pain and healing. I hope and pray that no one here gets cancer. I hope and pray that none of you will ever need the medicine that Sandy gets to save her life. Thank God there is help. Don't take it away. Prop 215 is the letter of the land. That is the law of the land, okay, that has been passed and there's no further debate. I don't want the police involved with pot unless there's a citizen complaint documented on file in the police department. Six plants are minimum medicine for one person. Clear Lake is number 10 most dangerous place to be in California, okay? Clearly, there's a 38th most likely place to go bankrupt. How about working on that? Hi, my name is Glenn Goodman. I work at, the, at Lower Lake High School, helping to educate some of your high school age citizens. I think that the question that you ought to be asking is how to best serve those citizens. I think Lake County has proven that too little regulation isn't a good thing, but I think the whole country has proven that too much prohibition creates the very situation that we would, I think, want to avoid. It creates the war in our inner cities, it creates the crime. 80% 80 to 90% of all non-drug related crime really is drug related because it's to get money to buy artificially high priced drugs. You have to ask yourself, at what point do you balance regulation so that it doesn't hurt the citizens? If you go too far, 
what you're doing is you're forcing everyone inside. And so that makes it harder for law enforcement, although it's a mixed bag for law enforcement because the increased crime gives them better job security. But by adding hay to the haystack, you don't make it simpler to solve the real problem, which is people who are exploiting 215 to make absurd amounts of money. If you allow legitimate patients to grow a reasonable amount, such as Bruno has suggested six, which is what the state recommends as well, then that puts an, that isolates the people who are breaking the law and who are exploiting uh, the law to make money. And in fact, it almost seems like the, the regulations as written will benefit those people at the exclusion of everybody else. Certainly, the citizens are not benefited by increased fire danger, lowered home values, with the mold and all this stuff when you force it indoors. Why not have sensible regulations that will maximize what... Um... All right, thank you. Hello, my name is Daniel from Lower Lake, and I um, want to thank the council for considering this uh, significant issue that we've all been facing here in this county for a long time. Um, I'd like to just voice my opinion in support of Bruno's compromise uh, solution. Um, while far from perfect, I do feel like it's um, something in the middle ground that we all could potentially live with. I would say um, uh, one modification I would maybe suggest with some of the council members that might not be comfortable with uh, the potential of six big plants within somebody's backyard is to consider a canopy size outdoor in addition to indoor. Um, and I would suggest potentially um, a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12, so 100 square foot or 144 square foot canopy. That way somebody can't take their whole yard and fill it up because they know how to grow six very large plants, but at the same time, they can still grow enough for themselves and obviously not be in it to, on the profiteering side of things. I think um, one of the solutions with Bruno, I think the PD and code enforcement will still have their hands more than full with people that are not in compliant with the ordinance. So therefore, they can extend most of their time and resources to us dealing with those real problems, those 99 plants, the people with no homes on the property, the people that are blatantly not considering their neighbors, and the people that are really are trying to just grow some for themselves cannot get penalized, so thank you for your consideration. Hello, I'm Joe Kitchener, citizen of Clear Lake. I'm an ex-pothead, and I, I'm not uh, in favor of pot smokers too much. Um, I feel they are fiddling around with their personal comfort while Rome is burning. That said, we don't have the right to deny them the use of their bodies, minds, and spirits as they see fit. That is partially our fault, the non-users who stand by and allow insidious brainwashing to warp our children's minds, starting with public education, proceeding with news bought and paid by huge corporations, continuing with community control ceded to dark and secret institutions of government, bought and paid for by elites and their corporations. We graduate them to a community that does not care about them, has no work for many of them. Much of the work it does have is authoritarian drudgery without living wage. Then we wonder why they turn to drugs and alcohol as a means to feel okay. The voters of California say people have the right to grow medicinal pot, even though many are primarily interested in getting high. They could be addicted to a much more dangerous drug, ethanol, which kills thousands of people every year, the production of which pollutes our beautiful lake and water supply far more than any other single source. I'm talking about fertilized vineyards with large areas of steeply sloped bare mineral earth. It is unfair to crack down on medicinal pot while we do nothing about these other derelictions of our community duty. As Council Member Bruno Savit here says, we have existing city laws that could be used to abate the bad behavior associated with large-scale illegal growing. If the city passes prohibition, it is likely to incur hefty legal fees and have the ordinance overturned anyway. If we must have regulations, I favor limiting medicinal pot to six mature plants per adult person and 12 plants per property grown indoors or out. 
Policing should be in proportion to all other crimes triggered by public complaints, not by illegal searches or profiling. Thank you. Dr. Zabelian, I'm not in favor or against. I have something to advise you, perhaps you're not aware, and more specifically for your attorney. Two weeks ago, the lawsuit which was filed in a federal court is returned back to Lake County with the comment that most of the claims against the Lake County are valid. Constitutional rights amendment 14 may have a lot to do with your work. Thank you. My name is Adelia Leonard. I am a citizen of Clear Lake, California. I am a taxpayer. I am one of your constituents. I volunteer in my community. I do charity. I'm not a criminal. I grow for my five-year-old son. I'm a mother of six children, and my five-year-old happens to have special needs. He has autism, seizures, and because of his seizures is now mentally retarded because of the damage that was done to his brain. We lived at UCSF for the first two and a half years of his life. He was on a liquid diet. We were told he would never walk. He would never talk. He would never be potty trained. He would never be a normal child. Now he has had a year of high CBD, low THC, marijuana. I grow it organically. I do not use chemicals, and he's doing everything they said he would never do. He's thriving. I believe that you guys support patients. You want them to be able to have access to their medicine. That's why you say go to a dispensary. Dispensaries do not carry high CBD products. They only carry THC products. I found one in San Francisco for $250 a week. I could supply my son with medicine. So people that say that they get their medicine from a pharmacy, you have insurance, and you don't pay that much a week. It's ignorant. We should be allowed to have our six plants. We want to follow the law. The people that are breaking the law, let's run them out. This gentleman that talked about his children that are fearful, my family is fearful as well. I am just the only mother up here, but there are 50 other mothers that I supply with oil here in Lake County. They don't come up because they are scared, because people harass us. They threaten us. They say that my son should die because they're tired of hearing my mouth talk about medical marijuana, and I have CPS visits, even though I have five doctors from UCSF saying that this is what my child needs. So I am one voice, but I am one of many. So I please, I urge you, I urge you, please don't do this, please. And if you do, I hope you visit my son at UCSF. Thank you. Hi, folks. Terry Larson. Um, I'm here as a citizen, not representing Lake County Magazine. I passed around to everyone uh, at the table a new bill that has been introduced by uh, Cooley. It's called Assembly Bill 266, Medical Marijuana Regulation. This bill covers much of what you want to try to do individually. I suggest that you follow the lead of other cities who are waiting for the state to set the guidelines and go along with those guidelines instead of completely denying people their medicine. I own a property here in Clear Lake and I'm selling my property without doing the renovation that I hope to do, mainly because I just don't think there's going to be a market for this house uh, in the near future and I want to just get rid of it. We planned a great renovation. We can't grow any plants in that place. It's across the street from the school, so there's no growing there. But I, I feel like it's a lost cause having any investment in Clear Lake. Um, in addition, I represent a group called Patients' Rights Committee, and I wanted to let everybody know there's a lot of rumors out there that I'm a major drug dealer, and I want to let everybody know that I supply many, many patients, some in this room, with full extract cannabis oil, which is an oil that is ingested orally, not smoked. This oil cures cancer, it has cured epilepsy, it has, well not cured, but stopped seizures, and it does many, many other things of which, if you deny me the right 
to have the, the plants that we need to make this oil, people literally will be dying, okay? Your next door neighbor, Ms. Mayor Bustelo, is one of the people that provides me with that medicine at no charge. This oil is given to these people for free so that they can heal themselves. And if that man is not allowed to do that, we're going to lose a lot of people in this town. You're going to be going to a lot of funerals. on this issue all over the western United States, but I live here in Lake County, and most of you know my face. I love Clear Lake and want the best for this community. Um, I, I, Bruno, thank you for taking leadership on this thing. I think you have some very forward-thinking ideas, and uh, I also read the letter that Ms. Pusolo sent to our friend Mike McGuire, Senator Mike McGuire, um, and I want to say that echoes the sentiments of communities like ours all over the state. Everybody is, is asking for help. Um, I just want to say a few things about the pragmatism of what, what we're doing. You know, the city of Lido has enacted a ban that has resulted in an ongoing court battle that has yet to be heard by the, the, the Supreme Court. So it, it is still undecided. Um, this ban would take a different uh, path from the appellate court, and when it gets to the Supreme Court, it, they would be compelled to hear this case. Um, there are, uh, there's a lot of legal talent out there that is itching to fight a case like this. And I don't think it's the best thing for our city to take on that legal battle. Um, also, it's, it bears mentioning that Measure M, which is probably the most restrictive thing to date that has been passed prior to this suggestion, um, failed by 54% in the districts reported in uh, Cleveland. So there's overwhelming support for keep, real cannabis regulation on an outright ban um, by the electorate in the, in the city of Clear Lake. And I think that um, should the patients you see here decide to do a referendum on this uh, ordinance, it would take very little effort to gather the signatures necessary and hold a special election, which again is not the best thing for this city. Um, I think the best thing, my opinion on the best thing for the city is to consider the compromise that Bruno you know, is, is, is uh, suggesting invite some of the stakeholders to the table, invite ASA, invite Rumble, invite the PRC, uh, invite the Emerald Grove Association, have a meeting, and come up with a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm Harvey Payton. Uh, I'm a citizen of Clear Lake here. And there's a lot of people in here that know me that are both for it and against it that everybody's talking about their rights being taken away. What about my rights? You know, I live in this community too. My people around me are growing. Not six plants. Their lots are so crowded and everything that they can't walk through it other than a path. We tried to get a compromise. It was taken advantage of. We got people coming in buying lots. They're not living on it. They put out a, a trailer, a motor home, and they plant. They're not even from this area. They're coming in from out of the area. Now, you talk about wanting your marijuana and everything. That much is fine. But don't take advantage of us that don't want it. No. We try to compromise. We try. And you're here and stuff saying, no, we're taking away your rights. My right, I can't go out in my yard and enjoy my yard, which I put thousands and thousands of dollars in landscaping it, trying to make it nice. The value of my home and stuff four years ago was 228000 Right now, I couldn't sell it for 65000 And you're taking, uh, we're taking away your rights? Come on. You know, that's, let's work together if anything else. You know, thank you.
Hi, my name is Joel Moore. I've been here about 20 years in Lake County. I've been in Clear Lake for about the last 15. Uh, I have most of you know me. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about who I am and what kind of stuff I've done. If you don't know me, ask the ones that do know me. They'll tell you who I am. I'm not a criminal. Five years ago, I was diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer. It's come back twice. So three times I've had to fight it back. The last two times I have survived it because of cannabis oil. If I cannot grow it, I will die. And if I die, I will come back and haunt every one of you. I thought I was gonna, I thought I knew what I was gonna say when I got here, but after listening to these people, I am dead set against recreational drugs, recreational marijuana. The people here that need it, I don't know how in God's name you can refuse to let them have three plants, four plants, five plants. I condemn the groves. They're the ones that have, I think, made this city what it is now the ones that are making it for money. But please don't let these people just not get their medicine. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jerry Spittler. Um, I helped create the ordinance that you're trying to wash away. And during the creation of that ordinance, I questioned our city manager and the attorney at that time I said, shouldn't we have an attorney helping us create this ordinance that specializes in marijuana? And uh, I was quieted by the attorney when she snapped my head off and insisted that she was a specialist. And Joan, I know you remember that. She said she specialized. They had a specialist at their firm, and she knew exactly what she was doing. So you can imagine the embarrassment and how appalled I was to see illegal, gigantic grows all over my neighborhoods. I've lived in my city for 30 years. I care about this city. I'm vested in this city. I've owned and operated a business in this city for 20 years. And it was disgusting to me to see illegal grows all over my neighborhoods. But I would never deny a patient the right to grow their six plants. And that's why we created the ordinance in the first place. So I would like to see I would like to see this council go back, fix what's broken, not open another can of worms and entangle themselves in lawsuits and another ordinance that they have to work the bugs out of. Start from where you're at, fix what's broken so our department can enforce it, and limit these things to six plants. It was absolutely ridiculous what went on last year. And, and I felt upset about it as a citizen, knowing that 59% of our income goes for the police department, and I didn't understand what was wrong, being that I was told by our city manager and the attorney that they knew what they were doing. And then it comes back to me, well, I guess they didn't. It's not enforceable. Fix what's broken. Don't start over. Take the work that's already been done, learn from that, and make it right so these people can grow their medicine. I urge you to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Dan Pearson, and I'm a resident here in Kirley. A lot of you people out here know me. I've lived here a long time. I've been in Lake County almost all my life. Um, but what a lot of you guys don't know is that when I hurt my back working for Walmart, um, they put me on a lot of pain medication. And pain medication took a toll on my brain. I threatened to kill my wife. I threatened to kill my mom. I threatened to kill myself. Um, this is really hard for me because I don't like remembering myself that way. Um, I dabbled in it when I was a kid in high school. I smoked it. Hell yeah. Who didn't? Right? But now I have a new respect for it. I used to have convulsions in my bed. I would kick my wife so hard I'd make bruises on her legs from the convulsions in my back. I've had nine back surgeries. My wife just got in type of cancer. Three times she had surgery because doctors kept screwing up and not getting it all out of her throat. She had thyroid cancer. Um, they would give her pain medicine. 
so I gave her some of mine. But I ran out because I was only about a girl six. I have to have my medicine. What's she going to do for hers? Is it fair to you all? It's not fair to me. I don't think it's fair to anybody else. Thank you. Hello, my name is Matt Rubin. I moved to Clear Lake with my family about seven months ago. Not for the intentions to grow, but I do use medical marijuana. I personally don't grow. But to take away the rights of the people to grow is not right. If you take away the rights of the people to grow, I have to go for either more expensive medication or go without. The true problem in this town is methamphetamine. I live on Walnut. In three blocks of my house, I can take you to dozens of abandoned houses that are squatted by tweakers, used as meth labs. Take my kids to Redbud Park every day. I buy new syringes laying in the damn park. Who's cleaning this up? I don't see joint roaches. I don't see broken pipes. I don't see discarded marijuana plants. I see methamphetamine everywhere, and no one has the balls to tackle it right now. So why should you focus on that? Go with Councilman Brewer. He seems to be the most reasonable man up here. And I think we need to take a serious look at the methamphetamine. That is what's causing the violent crime. That's what's causing the crops to get ripped off and you're complaining about. It's not other growers doing it. Sick people can't get out of bed and they'll steal weed plants. People want methamphetamine all day and night because they're going at 3 in the morning to steal it. So let's just focus on the town's real problem and leave sick people alone. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hugh Watt. Um, I own Monday Bay Clothing and DC, and I work with numerous people with what I do. I mean, we give 10% to cancel. We do all kinds of things. And you guys need to open your eyes. You guys are here to work for us. You guys are here to be here for us. Yeah. And look at all these people here right now. All these people are here because they need you. We need you to actually look at them and see that they need you to help them in this matter. Right now, you guys are attacking them instead of attacking big folks. If that's your problem, attack them. Don't attack these people, have them spend thousands of dollars to just take care of themselves. What you're doing is wrong. This is not wrong. This is not the old days. This is the future. Get with it. Otherwise, this place is going to die away. And so will all these people. You know, you want to all of you. Thank you. What I'm going to say is going to only take one minute, hopefully. <laughs> um, my name is Pamela Pope, and I've been here now for about, oh, eight years. Um, I've been very sick. I just was cured from liver disease. But I've also fallen. I can't take any medication. It doesn't work. It makes me sick. It also gives me seizures. Cannabis is the only thing I can take. If I didn't have that, I would kill myself, literally. That's how bad I feel. Um, you take this away from the people, you may have a whole bunch more than me coming right behind you, you know. Um, and another thing, um, I, I also worked with law enforcement for a while. And if you take this, from the people, the clubs, the boards, I understand there's going to be some problems. Well, I guess I'm going to talk a little longer. But anyway, if we take this away from the people, this is going to bring in more trouble. You're going to have the people coming in from the Bay Area. You think you got problems now? You're really going to have some problems. You know, so I, I know you're, you're reasonable people. And I hope that you can. Um, you know, work with, work with the people here in Lake County. I myself am selling and leaving because uh, I, need, I need more help and I can't get it here. But please, work with the people. You know, I'm sure we can do that. Thank you. Good evening. For those who don't know me, my name is Peter Schiffman. I'm a property owner in Clear Lake. I have We've not planned on speaking tonight, but there's two, one issue that has not been addressed yet, and I'll get to that in a second. For those who do know me, know that I've never smoked marijuana, cannabis, pot in my life. I've never taken any illegal drugs in my life. Unfortunately, I've taken a lot of prescription 
drugs in my life, which is not very conducive to my body. I have a bad reaction to it. Six months ago, I was diagnosed with sports-related epilepsy. It's in the head. I am on over 3,000 milligrams of drugs right now to control seizures. It doesn't work. My wife, and I got to say first, there are a lot more people in this room, in this city, that have a lot worse illnesses than I'll ever have in my life. What I have is an inconvenience. But by taking edibles, I'm talking about CBDs, not TAC, I hate getting high. I don't drink very much. I don't like being out of control. But the CBD cookies and brownies, when I'm having a seizure, my wife feeds it to me, and I'm out and back to my normal life within 10 minutes. Before that, it would take me anywhere from an hour to a day to get back to normal. That's just a personal note. One thing I stopped and addressed, I watched on Channel 8 two weeks ago when you had your council meeting and you gave direction to staff to put up an ordinance of the no road together. I'm not the smartest guy to watch sometimes, but I can see a dog and pony show when I see it. <laughs> this was such a setup of having the gentleman from the representative of the uh, fire department, he had the chief here. I'm already done. Okay. Okay. My point here is the credibility of the people to me were lacking, especially the finance gentleman. Multiple ways to come up with, I'll be quick. There's multiple ways to come up with a cost allegation. Never mind. <laughs> 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 yeah. My name is Ron Stroker. Ed Roby can give you a background if you want on who I am and how I do things or whatever. I uh, wasn't going to speak here because the last time I spoke, I got myself involved in three years of nonsense at Ginger Valley. I've uh, been a resident of Clear Lake for about 10 years now. My property value, I've lost about a half a million dollars in my so far. But that's because of Wall Street, not marijuana. I would like to ask you people if you have done as elected official due diligence on this entire thing. After all, the entire United States of America is going through processes with all of this. What I will tell you is that I know that this police department, having worked for 10 years as a metropolitan cop myself, is overburdened, underpaid, and undersupported. So to allege or imply that somehow they're responsible for these problems is wrong. Okay? At the same time, when I first, six years ago, when my wife and I would go out and work through neighborhoods here and so forth, we'd see marijuana trees growing on roofs for crying out loud. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Last year, the city council took a vote to implement something that allowed for a process to kind of pull these things down and also to allow a lot of the situations to be seen, observed, allow them not to, to attack responsible citizens to spend their time on other things. I do not see how in a few weeks or months since you were elected that you could have done the true due diligence necessary. I grew up in this in this town, my family five generations late time. Okay? I hate to see this city looking like it does now after what I remember as a child. It has gotten better. Work with it, please. Don't start a war. Hi, I'm Vince Metzger, local businessman and property owner. I know most of you. I've worked for, with some of you. I voted for most of you. I know a lot of people in the audience. Been here for almost 30 years. I'm the victim of many crimes, having nothing to do with marijuana. And I submitted a paper that I'm going to read. Council members all have. I just want to do this for the benefit of the audience. Never mind. Oh, taking care of business. Now is the time for Clear Lake to take control of its own future. Marijuana is on course to be legalized throughout the nation. The arguments are over, and there are no stopping the liberalization of pot as both a medicinal 
and recreational substance, and the number one agricultural crop in the United States. Amen. What can a little town like Clear Lake do in response to this new industry? We could bury our heads and wait for state and federal regulations, which could take years. We could fight it and insist that enjoying the effects of cannabis are against the grain of morality and health as we indulge in alcohol, nicotine, and prescription drugs. We could pretend it doesn't exist and just take what comes down into our community, finally banning it outright because we are not capable of taking care of business. Or we can accept the responsibility of regulating our own lives in response to a new product that is sweeping with sweeping influences. As a local business owner, I'm required to have a business license, franchise tax number, IRS account, and meet all property and operational standards that would be trouble the average person. I pay into tax accounts that support the city, county, state, and nation. And I support local activities. Can I finish it? Well, we should make it so that people can operate. Hi, my name is Bridget Ornelas, and I've been living in Clear Lake for about eight years. And we are all patients, not criminals. Don't make us criminals. Ooh. Hi, my name is Amy Landrum. Um, I just want to point out that currently 23 states, including the District of Columbia, have currently, they currently have laws that are legalizing marijuana in some form. This map right here shows us. Light green is the uh, legal for recreational use. The dark green is for the medical approved usage. Um, District of Columbia voters also recently overwhelmingly approved a ballot initiative legalizing recreational purpose marijuana that will be subject to congressional review. Um, I also just want to remind everybody about prohibition and what that did for us. Um, it created um, more criminal activity because you had gangsters that were coming in and they were, they were the ones that were doing the alcohol and whatnot and doing the runs for that. Um, People didn't have money to take home to take care of their children because they were spending it all on the illegal um, alcohol. Um, there, there's just a lot of points. If you guys want to compare marijuana, look at the prohibition. We abolished prohibition because of all the res all the strain it put on us as a nation. Uh, my name is Christy Dillon. I have been a resident of Lake County, mainly Clear Lake, for almost eight years. Um, I know quite a few of you personally, actually. Um, I've done business at your place of business. I went to school with Bruno. Thank you, Bruno. Um, I voted for most of you. And I am coming to you as a representative of one of the collectives. I'm also friends. These are the men and women that have And if you deny their freedom to get their safe access to their own medication, you're basically negating everything that they sacrificed, everything that their family sacrificed for our safety. These patients, myself included, we need our medicine. I can't take narcotics. I can't take muscle relaxers. I can't take anti-seizure medication for my muscles. It doesn't work, or else I wouldn't be able to stand here and speak with clarity to you. Do not do this to our community. Not only are you denying yourself, but you're denying all of us. And that's not fair. We did get you in here. And like someone said before, we have no problem taking you out. Good evening. My name is Mitch Markowitz, and I've been a homeowner in Clear Lake since 1987. Uh, I know some of you because we've worked together, some of you I've talked. Um, the speaker who, who addressed you before I did used the word community, and I'd like to talk about community. I believe that there are over 13,000 people in our community. And when I think about community, I think of what's good for the, the great majority of people who live here and 
what do we want for the greater good? And when I see all the grows we have here in town, I wonder how all this cultivation uh, of whether it's medicine or recreational marijuana benefits our community. How do these grows make this a better place for all of us to live in? And I just don't see it. I don't see that this community has become a better place. Remember, I've been here since 1987. I don't see that this community has become a better place for the great majority of its citizens. And I'm wondering if this community, this community is going to deteriorate even further than it has, because I've seen deterioration. And I'm wondering, too, um, what kind of image we want for our community. If we want to be known as the medical marijuana capital of Northern California, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Personally, you know, I, I have no objections to medical marijuana. I have no objections to recreational use of marijuana. I just don't want six grows on my street. I think it's rather excessive. And then for those people, Hi, uh, my name is Heather Fisher. I'm a, a homeowner here in Clear Lake, and I've uh, been in here since 1976. Um, just wanted to mention that one of the things that I've noticed is that, uh, well, the one of my biggest thing is I am not against people who need it. I appreciate that physically that there are a lot of people who do need this. Um, my objection is to having it affect those who don't. And it's not a matter of them using it, it's a matter of the growth. And the, the uh, smells, the influences, the, do the guard dogs, the traffic in the middle of the nights that happen on these properties that other people don't always notice. Um, other communities have banned it. Now, if, if the county has banned it, now that means it's being concentrated in our city. And that's a dangerous position. Uh, other communities, such as Colorado, have uh, given it le legal advice or allowance, but even there, the dispensaries are the only ones that are allowed to grow. They, the people who use it and need it are not allowed to grow. So, if, what happens then is we're, uh, if we were to uh, go ahead and continue to to take the same position that the county has taken and eliminate something right now so that we are not the ones who are proposing the new changes, then if when the country does come to an agreement on what needs to be changed and how to do it, they will have already had the ability to put those things in place so that we are not the ones who are the testers. And that would be, because otherwise I see that you guys are going to just have a really uh -huh. big problem. <laughs> Was it time? Uh, Dave Hughes, a uh, 40 year resident of Clear Lake. And before I start, before you start timing me, I thought it would be appropriate to have a petition. And so I, I developed this maybe a week ago, passed it out to a few friends, and then I spent maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes gathering signatures. So I have 120. About 125 signatures here, and then there was a Facebook petition that got, I think, 46. So there, and this is to support no growing in the city of Clear Lake. So I'd like to hand this to the city council. Thank you. Thank you. Can you start it over? As I mentioned, I've been here 40 years, and I can't believe... That he, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, I've lived here 40 years, and last year to me seemed like a new low in our community. We, I, I fought the ordinance when you passed it. 
and it was passed, and we said, come to Clear Lake and grow, and they came. And they came in numbers. I like what Harvey said. What about my rights? The property next to me was a grove. I had to put up with it. My house was broken into by people looking for marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. I, I talked to Sheriff Allman in Mendocino County. His words to me were, it's not working. It's not working in Mendocino County. And we had a realtor trying to change, uh, the, ask the county to change to allow more zones. The biggest problem is voluntary compliance isn't there. And that's what we really need to make it work. I'm not disputing the fact that it has medicinal uses. I'm not disputing that at all. What I'm disputing is where it's grown. And it doesn't belong being grown in a suburban community on a 50 by 100 lot. It doesn't. It doesn't belong on an acre. Good evening. My name is Dave Anzaldua. I live in Clear Lake. Been here 15 years. I, myself, am a 1991 Desert Storm veteran. I suffer from PTSD and cancer, Hodgkin's disease under my left, my left arm. We need due diligence. We need to go back and understand what we originally formatted for the cultivation. We don't need what we presently have. Sick patients are at hand. We need to be able to go back and understand exactly what Proposition 215 exactly is, exactly what it is. It allows six plants per person, per parcel. We need to understand exactly what is at hand here. You're subjecting people's lives. You're subjecting my life. I ask you, I humbly plead with you, you ma'am, as Madam Mayor, know me personally. I'm sorry you do. But anyway, it's beside the point. I ask you, and I plead with you, as this council, to go back and look at that due diligence that you originally proposed and put into effect, and put it back into effect the way that it's supposed to. Parts of it need to be ratified, I understand. But I'm only here as a citizen and as a patient that needs the medical marijuana for my own personal use. I grow it, if it's too much, stuff like that at the dispensary, stuff like that, I grow it. But I keep within the limits. The people that are on the lots and stuff like that with their RVs and stuff like that, go after them. They're your problem. Not us. I am a sick patient. And I will let you go with that. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lana Betts, and I've lived in Lake County 30 years. I've been in the avenues for nine years. And it's horrible. I do not feel safe. My grandchildren are not safe. There has been gunfire. In a half a lot, there's a hundred plants that are over the roof of these people's house. My grandchildren go to school smelling like marijuana. My house smells like it. I understand it helps for a lot of medical reasons. But my grandchildren come first, and it is not safe. I can't walk my dogs on a leash without other animals coming out from these houses that have all the plants. And if it was just for medical use, it's one thing, but it's not. A hundred plants on a half a lot at my front room window is ridiculous. And I shouldn't have to live like that. I shouldn't have to worry about next time there's gunfire from a bad drug deal, is it gonna be my granddaughter that's getting shot? 
So what do I do? Pull a butt off and shove it in the bullet wound? It's, it's not fair. There's no six, I, I, there's no six plants in the avenue. It's 100, it's 75. They're taller than the roofs of the houses. And if it was your house that got shot at, it'd be different. Oh, and they're going through our yards. I'm sorry. It's just, it, it's hard. It's hard to show sympathy when August and October, walking anywhere in my area is not safe. I have paid taxes here, and I've been here, I've raised a son here, and now three grandchildren. And it's not safe. It hasn't gotten better. Thank you. I'm Regina Sanders. I've been a resident here for um, 20 years now. And I believe when we first started the meeting, we did the Pledge of Allegiance. And the last sentence of that is, and justice for all. So where is our justice? Where is our right to grow our medicine? I have a child. They'd rather put him on Oxycontins for his injury instead of letting him eat cannabis. So you tell me, would you like your child addicted to narcotics? Mm -hmm. My aunt also has MS. She can't get out of bed. But when she uses the tincture, she's able to walk. She's able to function. So I just ask that you guys please do not take our right to grow our medication. Good evening. Pete Bustelow, um, citizen of Clear Lake, homeowner in Clear Lake. I've been here since 1979. And I wanted to say that sick lives do matter. Healthy lives matter. Um, we all have rights to live and choose the way we want to live our lives as long as it doesn't infringe on somebody else. Unfortunately, what's happened, I think, with the uh, medical marijuana issue is that it is, even if it's being grown medically, infringing on other people. Um, six plants, there's no way that I have seen to control the odor, to keep it just in that lot without it going onto other parcels and affecting people. Um, alarms that go off all hours of the night. Um, the smells, like I said, um, what it's doing to the neighborhood. And um, likewise, like I said, it would be the same for us if I decided that, you know, I was a meat eater, I was going to have six cows in my backyard. You know, the noise, the smell is not fair for the people that live around me. So take that into consideration when you guys are, are doing this, that it, it's, it's what is best for the whole community as a whole, um, healthy and safe. Thank you. Hi, how y'all doing? My name is Donald Ferris. Uh, I've been here about 20 years. My son's gone to school here. Um, I help in the community all I can. I serve people food. I give. You know what? Enough about me. This is about sick people. This is about people that grow cannabis. Some of it's outrageous. Some of it's not. Now the, um, the ordinance is out there on 215 for us to have six plants. I don't personally grow. I don't have room for it. I don't have land for it. But if I did, I would, I would want to know that I could. I would want to know. That. I also, I, one more thing. I got ran over in 1990, and I can't. <clears throat> I can't take medicine now because of my stomach and my kidneys and stuff like that. I've got family out here that, that can back this up. And yes, I do. I use cannabis. And it's a lot better for me. It doesn't destroy my insides. It doesn't put holes in my stomach. It doesn't give me acid reflux. If it, if the roads were turned and you people were asking us for something, who are we to say that you can't have it? 
Amen. Six plants is one thing. For us to have our, our medicine, thank you. for us to have our medicine and stuff, I'm not going to hurt you. Um, and please don't hurt us, just let us have our freedom. Thank you. My name is Jim Rouse, I'm a property owner there in Clear Lake. Um, I think we all have many important issues here that need to be addressed, but they're not going to go away by legislating laws that are not represent the people. This is a very important issue that has a lot of effects for all of us. There are many ways and many alternatives to uh, uh, apply all these solutions. Um, there's appropriate places to grow, there's not appropriate places to grow. There's places that will uh, be safe and sound for patients to grow, and there's places that won't be infringes on the rights of the homeowners. But there is a common ground here that we're all going to need to find. We won't find it right tonight, but we need to start looking a lot deeper, because just by drafting ordinances that turn regular patients and criminals is really not going to solve anything. It's going to create a lot more problems. There's many counties that have addressed all of these issues, and we need to do a lot of research in Santa Cruz County, uh, there, I could go through a whole list of counties that have become, that have addressed this issue and come up with some very good solutions that address the needs of homeowners, private peace of people, and patients. This is not going to go away. This is a major tide that has come in. And for us to just bury our heads in the sand is a mistake. This will, many things are going to happen right now. We're at the pivotal point in history, and we need to start standing up and doing the right thing for our people and the right thing for all of us. My family comes from a family of law enforcement. My father's a judge. My uncle is a probation officer who just happened to uh, have a bad bit of cancer. He was not the one to say, well, I'm going to start uh, applying that uh, cancer to my therapy. And uh, chemotherapy, and aside from other medications that he taken, made it so he's unable to even talk to his family for the last six months of his life. Uh, medical marijuana made it possible for him to be able to have a peaceful last six months. We, there's so much science that supports it day by day. You guys can do your research, due diligence, and realize that there's a lot of great applications of this, and there's a perfect place. There's community gardens, there's places that should not be allowed to grow, but there are places that do need to be allowed to grow, and we cannot make criminals out of these patients. Please, thank you for your consideration, and let's work on this together. Thank you. I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder from being uh, sexually and mentally and physically abused by a stepfather for 12 years. I ran away from home by the 17. But anyway, um, on top of that, we had a house with toxic mold that uh, destroyed my immune system. Uh, I had on pretty regimented diets and recently I had a total knee replacement and I forgot to tell the hospital that I was allergic to bleach and I got times all with my family. But um, I get anxiety attacks really bad and the campus helps. Recently uh, my hands broke out and people that know me know that it was my strength to take it and so just cut my hands. And uh, I give Melissa me uh, a cannabis tincture, and because uh, I have a prescription of steroids, but I've got so much liver damage from all the steroids I had me on, from all the allergies and uh, all that. So the tincture, it worked. No steroids. But I do agree, immensely, I can't stand inside of this stick and grows. And those are the people that are making it bad for the rest of us. Because what we do is so totally different. We spend a fortune on it, just the, it's all organic. You know, it's not like something to go sell to somebody on the street or something, it's not it. And um, there's edibles that we participate in the market once in a while. And we see people that come in and, you know, you see, all you I can see is, you got that. Look around you. Yeah. Why? Well, you know, there's a lot of birds. But anyway, I, I hope it can be worked out so that that can be Thank you.
Good evening, council members and um, staff and guests. I'm Akila Elamine Makhit. I neither grow nor use marijuana. I'm sure I have a couple of legitimate reasons if I needed to get a script from my doctor. I've had migraines for over 50 years, most of my life, and I have carpal tunnel in both hands. However, my next door neighbor does grow marijuana, or her son does, and he has done so for the past three or four years. I am not offended by the marijuana that the young man grows because I never smell it. His mother told me that he was going to start growing it a few years ago and asked me if I would object. I said, as long as I don't smell it and it doesn't cause any problems, I'm okay with it. And the only reason that I verify that he grows it is because I can see it from my bathroom window. So the question I'd like to pose to you all, or for you to consider, is if my neighbor's son can grow marijuana, and I see about six plants every year, and I don't smell it, isn't there a way that you all can instruct people on what kind of plants to grow that don't smell? Thank you. City Council, thank you for having us all here so we can discuss this and figure out a way to all work together and work these issues out. And like the gentleman said before me, it's going to take some time. Tonight may not resolve a lot, but at least you get to hear how people feel. They can express themselves. Um, I've spoke before you before. And I've mentioned that I was on chemotherapy twice for having liver disease. And the doctors told me, and it's supposed to be so, that about a year after you're done with the therapy, um, you can regain your energy back. In my case, that's not so. You know, I've had, well, not to mention just the liver, but I've had four joint replacements in my right knee and five joint replacements in my left. And uh, I'm, I guess I'm trying to get to the point about pain. Um, I use cannabis in lots of different ways. And um, I really don't know what's gonna happen because of my liver, I can't take pills. They make me sick. I'm glad I can't take them because I'm clear headed. And um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just up here trying to um, plead with you to reconsider all the patients and everything that they've asked you for. And um, I just hope that you make sound decisions based on the patient's needs. I understand that the other folks in Clear Lake that have issues with marijuana, I understand that, and I'm sorry for it. But this is my health and this is my life. And I need it. So I ask that you reconsider, please. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone. No, you go for it. My name is Richard Jones. I've been a resident of Lake County since 1997. Um, one thing that hasn't been mentioned uh, at the meeting here is I own a couple of properties in uh, Lake County, Clear Lake, and um, last year I was approached by somebody that offered to, and I know from other people that this is uh, not something that's unusual, but been offered to uh, have somebody construct a fence and then they would pay the property owner and then they would obviously take some responsibility to be growing on somebody else's property. Now, I actually, I have a, a medical card, I have a, a problem with my neck, but um, penalizing those that are sick, those people who stood up here and uh, are part of the community, our community, that need to be able to grow uh, product that they can actually smoke themselves, that's one thing. But uh, having people come in 
and uh, take over somebody's property and then grow whatever they grow, 99 plants or whatever they grow, and then the person that owns the property, in my guess, would be probably responsible uh, for the property, I'm guessing, uh, seems like you can also penalize those people that are poor, that are taking a couple of thousand dollars that's supplementing their income, they're getting a fence out of it and improving their property. And I think the people that are uh, actually coming into the county and doing that are the people that you should be targeting. Those people that are not part of our community that are taking advantage of everybody here. Thank you. Hi, my name is David. Uh, I just have a couple things to say. I think he said a lot right there. That's exactly what I'm thinking as well. I served in the military for about 11 years, which means I have defended all of your rights. And for you to sit there on your cell phone while people are trying to address issues pertaining to this meeting that you guys want to have is garbage. We are standing by here to give you our feeling if you're sitting on your cell phone after yeah. this lady said, please put your cell phones away. So I'm offended when I go and I, and I fight for everybody's freedom and we're supposed to be heard based on that and you can't even take that minute to hear us out. Yeah, I agree. I understand that, I understand that, but, but at the same time, we want the respect that, that we deserve. And being on your cell phone while people are speaking is not respect. Okay? Appreciate that. Okay? Okay. Alright, so I did. I fought for this country for 11 years. That means I fought for you, I fought for you, I fought for you, I fought for you, I fought for you. I fought for everybody in this room. I fought for everybody's right. For you guys to say that you're going to take that right for us to have our six plants is garbage. It's garbage. The state says that we can have those plants. Whether it be six, whether it be 100, take the 100 out, take the 75 out. Leave us who want our six plants. I'm sure we'll gladly pay your $50 to grow our six plants, as long as everybody else follows suit. And if, when I say everybody else, I mean law enforcement. If they're going to enforce those six plants, enforce the ones that aren't doing more than that. Yeah. Okay? That's all I ask. You've got to find a common ground. That's it. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.